Hello, everyone, and welcome to Project Insights Agile Practice Webinar. The topic for today is called, I Went Agile and Can't Go Back to Stage Gate Practice. Just a few things to note before we get started. All participants will be put on mute. However, any questions you have are more than welcome. Please go ahead and type those into your question box, which you can find on your GoToWebinar dashboard. We will try to answer all of your questions during the session, but if you can't, uh, please uh, make sure that you email us your questions and we will be able to get back to you before the end of the day. Uh, please note that all our PM and Agile training sessions are valid for one PDU free of charge. However, you must be in attendance for the full session. We'll email you your PDU certificate by the end of today, so please hold off on emailing me about your certificate until then. And for all other PDU information, please visit our PI community, type in PDU in the search, and you will find uh, the PMI rules in an article called Webinars and PDUs. Also, for those of you that are interested in the recording and slides, those will also be sent to you via email by tomorrow morning. My name is Denise, and I'll be your moderator for today. I'm on the marketing team here at Project Insight. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please feel free to reach me at denise.rodriguez at projectinsight.com. If you're not already familiar with Project Insight, we're a cloud-based project management solution. We work with two kinds of companies, those that are rapidly growing and need to scale the way they're managing their projects, and those who want greater visibility across their project portfolio, want more insight into the workloads of the resources, and want a better way to collaborate on projects among team members. If any of these sound familiar to you and you'd like to learn more, please feel free to contact us via phone, email, or of course you can always request your customized demo at projectinsight.net. I'd like to give a very warm welcome to our presenter today, Dr. Dave Cornelius. Uh, Dr. Dave is a, val is a value delivery leader at BioRad Laboratories. He influences cross-functional teams to deliver amazing quality products to delight customers. Dr. Dave is also the founder of the Five Saturdays program that empowers high school students through agility and innovation by providing learning experiences in technology and lean business. Is also the author of the book, uh, Transforming Your Leadership Character, The Lean Thinking and Agility Way, and innovator of the game, Agility Leadership. Dr. Dave produces a podcast on iTunes and Google Play titled No Share with Dr. Dave. So with all those great things you do, welcome. How are you doing today, Dave? Thank you so much for joining us. I am amazingly good, and I hope everyone else is amazingly good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Fabulous. Um, just let me know when you're ready to go. My main screen, I need to go clean screen. Okay, show main screen, show my screen. Yep. Can you see my screen? Ah, uh, yes, we can. Yes, we're okay. good to go. There we go. We are ready to rock and roll. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depends on where you are in the world. I hope you guys are having a fabulous day today. Um, my talk today is I went agile and can never go back to a stage gate practice. In my experience, I've worked in several places where people in leadership and also execution roles expressed the desire to go back to a plan-based or stage gate process. You know, sometimes to my dismay, you know, I, I just felt that they felt tired of Agile and sometimes thought that going back to a waterfall or stage gate model would be easier. So momentarily, I had a flashback to the days of long planning and frustrated people. And I said, no, no, I won't go. Sometimes I, I, I would sit down and I said, what would possess a reasonable minded person to ever want those experiences again? Well, I'm not sure. So I decided to create a webinar aimed at telling people to stay where you are and continue to go through the agile adoption and transformation. Don't even think about retreating. Stay the course. People often forget where they came from and sometimes lack the vision to see where they're going. 
And I want to just encourage everyone who is going through or have a plan to go through an agile transformation. Well, first you go through the adoption, then a transformation, to tell you that this is not easy and it takes work, but it's worth every moment of the challenge. Every moment of it. So Agile is worth the journey. I just wanted to share that with you. And our topics today, we'll talk about the stage gauge practice briefly. Uh, retooling versus retreating, and, uh, an agile culture, looking at a continued value delivery, and sustaining success through agile teams. Very important. And our learning objectives is we want to identify the fruits of the agile practice, recognize patterns of comfort and complacency, develop a cycle of continual value delivery, and find ways to sustain agile teams and really respond to forward, forward markets. So what is the stage gate thing that people always talk about? Well, according to PMI, you know, it's a project management technique in which a project is divided into stages or phases separated by gates. Now the PMBOK itself has five process groups. And those process groups are initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, and, and controlling and closing. Now within those, you have five process groups and, and 10 knowledge areas. So for a total across all those five process groups and 10 knowledge areas, there's 47 processes that you have to be somewhat familiar with to enable you to execute and deliver value. Now, when people think of gates, they're, they're there for approvals or to go forward or to stop. In initiating, what comes out of that is I'm not going to go into all the details, so I'm going to stay really high and tell you that there are charters that needs to be approved and levels of stakeholder management. Well, if you're in an agile space, you're, you're more engaged with visioning at that point of, at point of time. You're looking at actionable outcomes. If you're planning, now what comes out of planning is months of estimates and team configuration. In the agile world, we're looking at tangible short increments of one to four weeks usually two weeks, and teams are in a steady state. You're not fluctuating back and forth always. Executing, you're looking six months or longer. Now, in the Agile state, you're looking at a continual delivery model. Monitoring and controlling, lots of status meeting and reports. In the Agile, it's more inspect and adapt. And you do this daily, bi-weekly. You're constantly engaging in conversation and exchanging information. Now, in, in closing, you close the project and then you have a post-mortem. Well, go die. Now, in the Agile world, we think of things on release on demand. So you could see that there's a varying difference between the two practices. And for me, the preference is to be on the Agile side. Now, let's move on one more to retooling versus retreating. I could tell you, retreating is always easier to do. It's much easier than retooling. And because retooling takes an effort to understand the gaps and find ways to move forward. It's, you have to have the moxie to engage others to go onto this new journey with you. And that could be difficult, but I said, keep going. You have to try. Like the agile practice, like many other practices, can become, let's say, boring after you reach a certain level of maturity it can become commonplace and loses the specialness the organization wants embraced and celebrated. Now, here's a few things that you should try to rekindle the fire in your belly for the value Agile brought into your culture. I said, get out of the building and attend some workshop and conferences. Meet some other people, see what they're doing, learn something from them. Um, go back and have a retrospective. Revisit the purpose of your Agile journey. Why did you do this in the first place? What did you hope to get out of it? I said, hold an open space event and invite leaders. And open space events are nothing more than a gathering of people where we spend a little time coming up with topics that people really want to talk about. And you talk about those things. And they're short, 50 minutes per session. And so in a half a day, you could have a great dialogue with many people in your organization sharing ideas and really getting a, a vision of where you need to go and why you need to remain agile. 
And I said, get back to basics. Sometimes we walk away from the things that got us there in the first place. I, I know lots of mature teams, in my experience, want, oh, why do we need to do retrospectives? Well, you need to continually learn because that is very important. And perhaps if you went away from that, it could be quite devastating. And retrospective is one of the things that people often want to pretty much get rid of. Well, who wants to really look at themselves all the time unless you're a narcissist? Well, this is what Agile asks you to do, to reflect on who you are and how you're working together as a team. Well, I think of the Agile magical moments and outcomes, and I think there are many for me. But let's begin with the core values. And so there are four core values, and Agile speaks to well, these core values help to ground us into a belief that we can get things done without having to spend months trying to predict the future. I can tell you that much. And I think that if I was able to predict the future, I would be in a different line of business for sure. But let's talk about the four values. We're looking at individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Working software products over comprehensive documentation. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation and responding to change over following a, a path or a plan. Now, one of the last thing that, when you look at this at the agilemanifesto.org, it says that is, while there is value in, in the items on the right, we value the items on the left. And so I just want us to not be confused with the word over to mean only, because some people think when they see the word individuals and interactions over processes and tools, it says individuals and interactions, and they forget about the right side. And I think the right side also has some value. And, and for us, what it really means is to give precedence and give more importance to the things on the left side of the conversation, but still do the things on the right side because you, you will need some documentation. It's, it's a fact. You may need to have some small working agreements um, for some level of negotiation, but spend more time collaborating with your customers. Um, this is, these are the grounding values that help a lot of agile organization and coaches and people who are actively engaged in this space. I love the agile community. And one thing I dig about the agile com communities is that there's many people gathering to share knowledge face to face and, and virtually. And there are many, you find a lot of people who are just, they said, look, we could accept failure, and, but with those failures, they're, they're, you get a certain amount of learning. I mean, no one ever learned to ride a bicycle by just getting on the bike and riding it once. You, maybe you may have had training wheels. You may have fell a few times and bumped your head. But in the process, you learn how to ride your bike. And in the Agile space, we say fail fast. Fail fast and learn fast. And we pre pre prefer to say learn fast because we want to learn things as quickly as possible so that we can move forward. I see a great demonstration of courage where people who were once retreated, because most, especially I work in software, so you, you have a lot of introverted people. But what I've seen in my experience is that people who work in the agile space tend to come out of their, their shells. They're willing to do so. But here's a few places that you could go and check out more about agility and agile practice. You could go to the Agile Alliance, which is agilealliance.org, Scrum Alliance, which is scrumalliance.org. I go to Agile SoCal a lot because I live in Southern California. And you could go to agilesocal.com. And there's also, you could just Google open space technology. I really love open space technology conferences because you define the topics and choose how, how, you, how much you, time you want to devote to a topic or a person. This is a simple law. It's called the law of two feet. And this simply states that you're responsible for your learning and you should travel to a place where you find that desired knowledge that you're seeking. I think it's really amazing to be able to have more autonomy and I would say control over the work that you're doing and learning that you need to, to get through. Agile brings about a culture shift. And the culture sh shift comes whether you ask for it or not. Because of the practice, it exposes so much. 
And the, the culture shift often results in a higher communication frequency, better team dynamics, and really exposes the weaknesses of the organization. So you could think of the net net of this as more of you have a great opportunity to explore change. This is common in every organization. Matter of fact, in just life, life is full of change. One, one quote that I've heard is the, the only constant is change. So we have to explore it and get our arms around it. We engage in lots of limited ex experiments, smaller amount of work, gaining the maximum amount of knowledge. Small increments over time give you a greater value. You know, my great-grandmother used to say, a steady drip is better than a single downpour. And when I was a kid, I used to think about them like, that doesn't make any sense. But as you grow up and you learn more, you begin to ex really understand what she was saying, consistency. And, and consistency in small experiments, steady drip fills your bucket up as opposed to a single downpour and you don't get any more. Uh, we find that with the culture shift, there's lots of motivated people. And big work is trying to get accountable leadership. Um, it, it sometimes forces people into that uncomfortable space where they have to be accountable and, and not go off and show up every three months. Um, full engagement is what it asks for by everyone. But to, in, in, when, as you go through this culture shift, you know, trust is one of those core emotions in, in relationships. You know, the question is, can I trust my colleagues, my boss, or direct reports? When trust is present in an organization, conversations are more honest, and people can begin to challenge the assumption and the status quo. Well, I, it begins with a bounded autonomy, for me at least, where you create a space where people could actually go forward and do their jobs without being micromanaged. And that's what bounded autonomy is all about. The, the, the Scrum framework, or a lot of the frameworks in Agile, creates that type of, of boundaries that says, talk every day. Find out what, what's, where do you have impediments or where's your success. Meet every two weeks. Um, show people exactly what you've achieved and get some feedback. And no one has to tell them exactly what to do. It's just a nice framework that allows them to walk through that practice of, of delivering value. We ask managers to get out of the way to allow self-organization. And this is hard. And as, as I'm leading teams, sometimes it's difficult to get out of the way, but I have to always remind myself about bounded autonomy to allow space for people to grow and be the very best that they can be. And I always tell people who are part of my, my teams is that when you're at home leading your family, I'm not there to tell you what to do. So I, I want you guys to take on that same mindset and personality when you come to work. Uh, you know, this one thing that you could come out and ask for help and really get that help at any point in time. And we're not afraid to fail, right? Because failure is, is a way to improve now and we're, we're not beating up in people and saying, oh, you failed, so what a horrible thing or a horrible person you are. Well, yeah, you fail and you learned. So how do we get better? How do we always participate in the practice of continual learning? Now we're going to go into our first group interaction to find out if people are paying attention or still waking up. But I know if you're like on the East Coast, you're already awake. Ah, here it is. Agile core values help us to A, focus on collaboration and outcomes, B, build better teams, C, have core values, D, guide business leaders. I wonder what, what are our audience thinking this morning? What do you guys think? Okay, let's see here. Let's share some of our results. So 81% said A, focus on collaboration and outcomes. 12% said B, built better teams. 4% said C, have core values. And another 4% said D, guide business leaders. Wow. We have to go with the majority today, huh? You guys are right on. I mean, you guys are paying attention to, to what's 
going on. It's really focused on collaboration and outcomes. Very, very great. Okay, let's see what did my, did my okay, did my, did my mouse go away? A common practice is in the agile space is to focus on continual learning. It is the key to grow. Uh, one practice that I use with my teams is to provide a two-hour learning Friday. Well, every Friday is you have two hours to learn. And it's available to all of our team members. And they can learn a new topic or practice as a team or as an individual. Or they could just spend that time working if they choose to. We, like for example, last, last week Friday, we had Microsoft do a virtual presentation on Visual Studio 2017. Well, that's really important for um, our software developers to really figure out what's coming um, in the latest software that's, that we use in-house. In a few weeks, we're talking about UI UX. Um, you're talking about user experiences in terms of building better interactions with our systems. But I tell you, there are many other topics. I read books with my teams. Um, we just read uh, Simon Sinek, Begin With Why, or Start With Why. Um, right now, we're going through blogs and looking for different topics of interest. So we, as, as we're in this community of continual learning, we're always looking for new techniques and skills. Well, when, if you approach this, I said have a strategic focus. And the strategic focus is really around building a learning organization of community. That's one thing that I strive for. I tell everyone, and I don't want to manage people. I'm more interested in leading and building a learning community because if you have a learning community, you could tackle just about any problem and, and really get through it. Uh, it. Gets us to a place where we could solve really great problems together. People walk, walk away with better technical skills, better soft skills, their communication skills are, are up. Um, better ways of handling um, different issues and problems. And it's really great for groups or individuals. This is something that we, we have to focus on as an organization, and it's really, really important. Emergent leadership is really key, and it really inspires others to take a risk. Often people respect those who are willing to step up and take on challenges. I mean, have you ever noticed you know, that person who are willing to jump on in and work on uh, on something that no one else is willing to do. I mean, you have a different sense of, of respect for that individual. I know I certainly do. Um, and you don't need permission to be to be engaged in emergent leadership. You just need willingness. And you said you just don't need permission. You don't need your boss telling you, go do this. You see that there's something that needs to be done. Maybe you go do it, or you organize a group of people to go and do that. So that's the beginning of emergent leadership. Uh, we seize those moments. You know, carpe diem, seize the moment. We have the ability to really become better with every opportunity that we take. Our leadership skills become better. And this is not limited to the senior people in, on your team or in the organization. This is open to anyone, anyone who has that great desire to go forward and, and lead can do so, and it's wide open, wide open to everyone. Key, as, as you engage in emergent leadership, but key for the team to be success is collaboration. And so in a recent Harvard Business Review article, um, it stated that collaboration is taking over the workplace. As business become increasing, increasingly global and cross-functional, silos are breaking down, Connectivity is increasing, and teamwork is seen as a key to organizational success. According to data collected over the past two decades in this research, the time spent by managers and employees in collaborative activities has ballooned to over 15, 50%. So as you could see, the world is shifting more toward this mindset, and this is one context of agility. And when I think of collaboration, it's really the art of doing work together. How do we get things done, cross 